All right. So um, hi, everyone. I am your host, Megan Bolter. So uh, welcome and thank you for joining today's virtual event. We have representative representatives from New York, New York Power Authority, or NIPA for short, and then also Jump Analytics. So for today's discussion, our event speakers will answer questions and openly share and discuss NIPA's in-flight financial planning transformation with SAP SAC. So before we kick off today's discussion, I do want to remind you that we're recording the event and it will be avail available for on-demand afterwards. Also, this, like Lauren mentioned, this is an interactive forum. You can see that we're making everyone panelists, and that is so you uh, they can speak and have camera on. So we encourage you to hop on camera, um, ask questions that you have along the way. If you'd like to ask a question, you can go ahead and hop right into the, into the conversation or use the raise hand feature or the Q&A feature in Zoom for the chat, and we'll answer those in real time, whichever you prefer. But uh, please remember this is a conversational virtual event. Uh, our discussion will be much more valuable with questions and interactions from the audience. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guests and our moderator. So first of all, we have Scott Tettenman. Uh, Scott is the Senior Vice President of Finance at NIPA, and he is a financial planning, analysis, budgeting, and treasury specialist. As SVP of Finance at NIFA, he leads major initiatives and is constantly driving for overall process efficiencies and improvements for the organization. Scott has significant experience within the energy markets um, industry, as well as dealing deal structuring, credits, and capital markets. So we're really happy to have you join the conversation today, Scott. Great. Hey, thanks, Megan. It's good to be here. Uh, nice to meet all of you. Hope uh, everybody finds this informative. Looks like from what I can see on the screen, I'm the only person actually in an office today. So that sucks for me. <laughs> Good to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Uh, next, we welcome Poland native Maciek Prezpolowski to the discussion today. Uh, having invested 11 plus years of his robust career at NIPA, Maciek is very well versed in NIPA's needs around financial planning and analysis. Uh, today, he leads a strategic team who holds responsibilities for NIPA's four-year plan, as well as supports reports and analysis for NIPA's leadership team. So thanks for joining us today, Magic. Good to be here. Hello, everyone. Awesome. All right. Next, uh, we have Justin McNeely. As one of the partners and founding members of Jump Analytics, Justin is responsible for all SAP Analytics business development and works with the Jump management team to ensure a positive and professional corporate culture, strong growth, values, par valuable partnerships, uh, and successful projects for their customers, including IPA. Uh, based in Toronto, Jump Analytics is a leader in providing advanced analytic and corporate performance management solutions to clients across North America. So thank you, Justin, uh, for taking the time to chat with us today. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Megan. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Glad to see a nice big audience. I'm looking forward to the discussion. Yeah, for sure. All right. Next, we have Wendy Howitt. Uh, Wendy is a senior business leader with more than 20 years of project management experience, financial accounting, and financial transformation there at Jump. Uh, as a principal consultant, she works closely with clients helping them through process automating, streamlining of financial functions. Of those clients, Wendy has worked closely with NIPA team. So thank you, Wendy, for joining us today. Oh, are you there, Wendy? Yes, she is. I can see her. <laughs> we'll work. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, happy to be here. Looking forward to uh, an interactive conversation and, and having more in-depth analysis of, of what Mike is doing. Awesome, thanks, Wendy. All right, so we actually have something exciting for the attendees on today's call. Jump Analytics has graciously offered a free SAC requirements workshop. So in this workshop, experts from their team will work with your team to understand your organization's goals, as well as perform a comprehensive assessment around your organization's current process and requirements. Uh, with this, they will be able to highlight actionable next steps as well as give a demonstration of SAP SAC. So really great offering. Thank you, Jump Team. Uh, and the winner will be chosen at random by myself. 
uh, and you must be present to win the, the workshop. So stay with us till the very end and we'll draw someone at the end of the session. So thank you, John. All right, and last but not least, our moderator is Lauren Reinhardt. So as co-founder and chief operating officer of AscendSource, Lauren is dedicated to driving strategic growth for AscendSource partners, uh, SAP customers and prospects and SAP. And so Lauren will be our session moderator and facilitator of the discussion between everyone today. So thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Megan. I'm right. uh, so happy to be here. I um, certainly appreciate everyone's time in joining. Um, if you haven't heard it three times already, this is you know, an interactive discussion. So certainly um, if you're comfortable, we encourage you to come on camera. Um, everyone's lines are open and, and can you know, have an active discussion. Um, like Megan said, we have the raise hand function and certainly the Q&A. Um, if you're not able to come on camera, you know, we'll make sure to, to pause for questions. Um, I, I joke, don't hold all the good questions till the end. I think, you know, kind of a typical virtual event format is, you know, that 15 minutes of Q&A at the end. Um, certainly don't want to, to, to wait until the good stuff because then we run out of time. Right. So feel free to interrupt at, at any moment. Um, so as we get started, you know, just want to kick off with a, with a basic question um, for, for the NIPA folks. Can you just share with us, you know, the project scope that we're here to discuss today, as well as just describe your technology landscape to kind of provide some context um, for, for folks joining today um, of, of what it is that you're, you're in the process of doing. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah, sure, Lauren. Thanks. This is Scott again. Um, just to start things off, so we're an SAP shop as far as our ERP system goes. Um, we have an old build of SAP. Um, we're currently looking at new potential solutions. Um, one of them is an upgrade to S4 HANA, and we're also exploring other alternatives. Um, in terms of the financial planning shop, which is where SAC is going to be first implemented, um, we've been an Excel shop up until this point which I'm sure a lot of you are, are probably in the same boat. Um, you know, we've, we've gotten to the point where Excel is just not meeting our needs. It hasn't for the last several years. Um, you know, our models have grown to just ridiculous sizes. Um, trying to extract data um, becomes difficult. Um, reporting has become difficult. And we just realized that we needed to move to some type of a new solution. Um, which is why we explored uh, different options and ended up landing with SAC. And if I could add to that, um, just, just mm -hmm. to reinforce the statement that Scott had made, um, as you may have known, NIPA is uh, actually striving to become the first end-to-end uh, -end digital utility. Uh, suddenly you cannot accomplish that without financial planning being on a state-of-the-art platform that allows you for very flexible reporting and uh, multiple scenario analysis, as well as integration with other systems. That's awesome to hear. And I think that kind of leads into to my next question, you know, from a trend perspective, it sounds like you guys are kind of on the forefront, but you know, what other trends are you guys seeing in your industry from, from an IT perspective? Uh, from an IT perspective, I mean, if you look at our organization as a whole, um, you know, we have power plants, we have transmission systems. Um, we're, we're in the process of moving over to more digital um, transfer switching to more digital controls throughout all of our power plants. Um, you know, if you look at our plant at Niagara Falls, which is um, uh, you know, the largest hydroelectric plant in the state of New York, we still have switches that somebody has to physically pull a manual switch to actually change something. Um, so, so we're in the process of updating all those controls, making, uh, making everything electronic, digital at this point. Um, in terms of our general IT infrastructure, it is at a corporate level. Um, we're moving away from a lot of old legacy systems that have been at the organization. Um, we're bringing in new systems and trying to architect an integration um, that will tie everything together. We had a lot of independent systems at the company that don't talk to each other. Um, you know, besides just where we sit in financial planning throughout the organization, there are spreadsheets that are emailed back and forth to people. Um, you, know, you know, we have all these disparate systems that, that just don't talk. So 
we're looking to set something up where we have more integration company wide um, and getting to that point where the transfer of data is more seamless. Um, I'd say would be the, the biggest thing that we're trying to move towards right now. And again, if I can jump in and add some, uh, NIPA is undergoing also a major transformation in terms of our product offering. Traditionally, we're a utility that has been generating power and transmitting power. Um, as you all know, there is a lot of movement and evolution in the energy markets. There's a, a lot of emphasis on renewables, um, uh, getting the um, small distribution uh, networks uh, behind the meter distribution, uh, clean energy solution uh, products. Uh, we have to integrate that into our offering. What goes with that is that uh, also on the accounting end, we have to have a system that allows us for a very flexible integration of those cost and profit centers into um, our financial reporting. So this is another trend that is pushing us toward trying something new. Managing those new profit centers and expansions in, in Excel has tremendous challenges. As Scott has already mentioned, the files are growing into um, relatively um, large numbers um, and that causes issues. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just add on to that as well. Besides all the internal work we've been talking about, we're, we're in the process of trying to build out new customer focused um, systems so that customers can access billing data, access market information. Um, it's something that we've been, uh, been striving towards for the last couple of years. Um, we are in the process of, of metering um, buildings so that customers can track their electricity usage um, and, you know, look at how their HVAC systems are working, how their lighting is working, um, and time of day metering to better control their costs and be able to optimize their way they're using electricity in their businesses. So we're doing a lot to try and help our customers as well. And these are all technology-based solutions. Right. So I'll pose a similar question um, to you, Justin and Wendy from, from the Jump Analytics team. You know, you work with a bunch of, you know, utilities companies, you guys are, you know, the go-to analytics partner in the utility space. So what are you, you know, hearing and seeing? Is it, is it similar to what NIPA has experienced? I'd love your, your perspective on it. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, we definitely have an emphasis in utilities. We work in um, a variety of industries, but uh, utilities in particular, uh, a lot of lar larger organization, uh, complex requirements, and a very strong desire to become more digitally driven. So that is a common theme we're seeing across the entire market. Um, the expectations are for process automation wherever possible, tighter integration of systems, and much more immediate access to data so that it can support more real-time decision-making. So that is definitely a, a consistent theme. And I mean, I've been in this space for, um, well, I guess 15 years helping organizations adopt a more systematic approach uh, to how they run their business, how they run fp &A processes or financial processes or operational processes. And it's still pretty surprising that there, there's a lot of organizations that uh, still use a lot of those manual processes, whether it be firing documents through email or still a heavy dependence and reliance on Excel. I feel like I've built um, a large part of my career replacing a lot of those manual processes and uh, bringing about um, better systems for doing uh, what essentially NIPA is doing today or what uh, NIPA is embarking on today. Yeah, now I'm gonna jump in here and I'm gonna say specifically the finance function itself is being asked to do more. Um, you know, sometimes and in some cases do more with less. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you may look at, you know, headcount ratio as to what you're producing. Um, and that ability to answer the questions typically find, or, you know, typically falls on the finance department. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the numbers are, are the truth. Um, and so, you know, the technology is now at a place where you can get, you know, answers, you know, instantaneous and, and you have that ability, you know, to answer those questions on the fly and adapt to these changing um, environments. Um, so, the trend is everywhere, um, especially heavily on the finance department, I feel. Agreed. Great. So as we kind of, you know, dive into the project um, that we're here to discuss today, you know, I want to start 
um, you know, at the why. That's always a big component of, of why, you know, you mentioned you guys were in Excel, you know, it was running out of pains, but kind of what compelling events, what was the catalyst to, to really make this, um, no pun intended, jump um, to, to SAC? Yeah, I, I think the biggest catalyst was that the amount of information we were being asked to produce has just gone up exponentially over the last several years. Um, you know, if, if you look back at the way we've been operating for the last 10 or 12 years since I've been here, there was a fairly standard group of reports that we would put out every month. Um, you know, we would update our prompt year forecast on a monthly basis and present that out to the board, to the public. Um, and over the last several years, there's been a lot more requests from executive management, from the board of trustees for more granular information. Um, it's not just, hey, we said we were gonna make $100 million this year, and now we're, we think we're gonna make 110 million halfway through the year. It's why has this changed? And you know, not, not big picture, but down to a granular level, what's happened with your business and can you explain all the variances that are going on? on both an annual basis and a look forward basis. Um, and dealing with that just strictly in Excel, as I said before, became more and more difficult to not only extract the data, but um, the level of detail we need for forecasting was making our models just be ridiculous sizes that took forever to run, forever to update. Um, and it just wasn't a tenable situation anymore. And I think that's been the real impetus for us to look for something new at this point. Um, and that and just kind of combined with the overall direction of the organization to move towards a more digital format for everything we do, it's kind of played into what our strategic vision is at the company. Um, so yeah, seemed like a good time. And, um, and lastly, you know, our SAP is kind of end of life at this point. It's been customized to a ridiculous level that it's not going to be supported in like two or three years. We've already been told you got to figure something out. So while we're looking to either upgrade or change our ERP system, this was a good point for the financial planning area to look for a new solution as well. So kind of all those things. Uh, so I actually had a quick question. I mean, yeah. uh, you mentioned that you guys work with utility companies a lot. And I know, especially in the West Coast, fire season is, is uh, you know, a big factor throughout the year. I mean, just from, you know, financial planning perspective, does that really factor in into a lot of your conversations? Is, is that something that you guys really kind of hone in on when when talking about, you know, and jump, jump analog solutions and SEC and, and kind of planning for the future? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll take a swing at that one. Um, I, not necessarily particularly around the wildfires, but um, certainly around scenarios and what if analysis, which would fit into that category. So um, the finance team's ability to spin up different scenarios based on a certain outcome, and it could be wildfire, it could be changes in the workforce, it could be changes in the organization, like an acquisition. Uh, these are all very strong desires. I think ultimately, um, organizations are starting to understand that there are systems out there that can improve and make their jobs a lot easier and you don't have to be crunching it through Excel spreadsheets. So having a system that's nimble so that you can adapt, um, you know, if, if wildfires are really prevalent this year, then being able to scenario those in and understand what the impact is uh, to the financials would be a key component for sure. Um, but I think it all comes back to being nimble and being able to go through any, very, uh, any of the various scenarios that could take place at any point in time. Right. I do have a I question. Think going back though, I think there's, a, uh, there's definitely a, a, a increased market awareness around the capabilities of solutions like SAP and LX Cloud. So we could talk about those what if scenarios, um, reducing errors in processes, streamlining processes. These are all really important drivers, increasing visibility, understanding what the impact is to the bottom line, what the impact is to shareholders. If there is a change, whether it's planned, uh, internally, or it's an external change environmental, um, being able to scenario those things quite easily uh, is, is really, really key. And I think the other thing is finance teams don't want to have um, an entire group of spreadsheet jockeys crunching numbers and running, spending 80% of their time doing analysis when 
really it should be just a process that you're you're basically clicking a button or running a running a, a logic package that gives you the scenarios that you need to support better decision making. And I think that's that awareness is has been very good for the market and very good for our various teams uh, that we work with anyway. Absolutely, thank you. Scott, uh, I do have a question. Uh, yeah. Can I go ahead? Um, I, I do work for a utility company out in Michigan here. Uh, thanks for, uh, this is going to be valuable to us. Uh, we are in a similar situation like you, uh, like our SAP systems are aging and data requirements are uh, from the business to get the business insight is growing, right? Um, can you be a little bit more specific about what was implemented? I'm trying to get my head around the, the financial things, what you did. Was it regarding the unbuilt analytics or the supply chain? What kind of a high level end to end process? Because end of the day, if your process is not producing the right amount, the right correct data, then any amount of analytics massaging it won't give you a thing. So did you have to go through a end to end process correction and then implement the solution? And somebody else has asked a question that why did you choose uh, SAP and the cloud. What was the the strong reason for that? Sure, I'll, I'll take that in two parts. Uh, first, let me let me just let you know where we are in the process. Um, so we haven't actually implemented the system yet. Um, we are in the process of implementing the system. So Jump has been working with my team, going through and scoping out what our existing process is, um, setting all the requirements, going through our existing models. Um, and, and it's kind of twofold. One, what, what are our actual models do? So from a technical standpoint, you know, uh, you have megawatt hours times price, it equals revenue. So they're going through that process and, and it's a little more complicated at NIPA than it is a lot of utilities um, because we have customer margins, merchant, we sell, we sell into the merchant market as well. Um, and we have a lot of economic development programs that a lot of private utilities would not have. Um, so we have a lot of complex calculations. So we're looking at that from a technical perspective. We're also looking at our overall processes and how we're doing things and trying to set up new, more streamlined ways of looking at data, collecting data and analyzing data as we're doing that. Um, so my kind of goal when we get to the end of this is to have a new technology solution and a new process solution at the end. Um, like I said, we, we've only gotten to the point where they've gone through and Jump and my team have mapped out our existing process. We haven't started with the implementation. So I can't tell you what that looks like yet, but I'll be happy to come back in, you know, six or nine months after we get there and we can have a follow-up and see, uh, see how things go, though I'm expecting they're gonna be fine. Um, and I think your second question was about why we specifically picked SAC or SAP Analytics Cloud. Um, when we did our RFP, we did it in such a way that we were looking for both integrators and integrators to propose solutions. So we didn't go out and just look at individual products. We put an RFP out on the street to say, okay, we need somebody who's gonna implement a product and give us the product as well. I didn't wanna do like a two step kind of picking a product and then finding an integrator to go along with it. So we did it all in, in one scope. Um, and we had an evaluation team that looked at all the different integrators and the different products that they were bringing to market or bringing for us to take a look at. We actually had, I think, five different vendors who proposed SAP Analytics Cloud, um, and then several vendors who proposed different solutions as well. Um, so we spent a long time setting up a, an evaluation matrix that went and looked at how adaptable it was, how user-friendly the system was from a technological standpoint. Did we think it could handle everything we needed it to? How it integrated with SAP? And should we choose not to upgrade to S4 HANA? We wanted to make sure that it would integrate with 
Oracle or some other system because there's a chance that we won't go from SAP to S4 HANA. Um, that decision hasn't been made yet. So we wanted to make sure we had an option there. Um, and I'd say that the, the biggest, most important thing that we did in this entire process was pulling in all our stakeholders from the very beginning. So it wasn't just the financial planning department that was looking to choose a solution, doing this in a vacuum and then saying to everybody else, here's what we're going with. Uh, we had our budgeting group involved, we had our accounting group involved, um, and then we had other businesses throughout the organization, people that run our power plants, people that bid energy into the market, um, our risk department is involved. Basically, anybody who touches our process was involved in the project from the very beginning. And that includes scoping out what the RFP was going to look like. And then we had representatives from each group of all involved in the evaluation criteria and evaluation process as well. So everybody had a say in what we were doing from the beginning, um, which I think built a lot of consensus throughout the organization before we decided to move, uh, move forward with something. And maybe Thanks, Magic Scott. can jump in. He, he worked a little more granular uh, level than I did, so take it away. Uh, you know what, the, I'm gonna sort of like start from the end saying that the, that involvement of other groups that, that Scott had mentioned was continued throughout the discovery phase, right? When we were uh, presenting Jump Analytics uh, with uh, what we do and what needs to be replicated in SAC, we made sure that um, all of the stakeholders from the Power Authority were actually included in those conversations so that uh, we could provide the Jump team with the best overview and making sure that we don't miss anything. The second benefit was that uh, we're getting the buy-in very early on. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the question as to why SAP, why, S, uh, why um, SAC, why Jump Analytics, uh, uh, well, uh, the idea of uh, having a system that is going to be easily integrated uh, with other solutions, which Scott had already mentioned, that was definitely a key factor. Now, another thing that played a great role is that uh, actually on the screen that you see right now, um, I can see people from the... Um, from the team that was sent out to present SAC, um, who presented to us. These people are right in front of you right now. And these people we have been interacting with on a daily basis. And we actually expect to continue that uh, conversation with the guys that we have uh, been familiar with. So it wasn't like there was a uh, an A sales team that went out to the power authority and wowed everybody with the uh, abilities of SAC. We got the team that is going to be working with us uh, through the process. Thanks, Scott. Um, I, I did uh, just follow up with one sim simple question. Um, sure. Like uh, what other major competitive products did you look at along, apart from the SAC before? Just curious, I mean, if on the top, if you can mention a couple of them. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it was not a public RFP process. Um, and we were a state government entity. I'm afraid I can't um, give specific names here today. I can tell you, I think everybody was in Gartner's Mac Quadrant uh, okay. for this type of analytic software. So there, there was nobody, nobody who didn't appear in their Magic Quadrant. Um, but just because of the nature of, uh, of our RFP process, I, I can't go into it. So I apologize. No, no, no problems. Thank you very much. Sure. Awesome. So, you know, I think we touched on a few things and I appreciate folks chiming in. So please continue to do so. Um, you know, this session really is for you to get questions answered. Um, but, you know, obviously we touched a little bit on, on why jump analytics was selected as, as the partner. And I, I love that word partner. It's, it's so important because it truly is a partnership. And so I would love to, you know, kind of hear from, from the NYPA team, you know, what your experience has been thus far working with jump and, and, you know, how that partnership is going and, and the same of, of the jump team, you know, what, what do you look for in, um, you know, in an ideal client, an ideal project um, that's allowed you guys to, to be successful thus far and, and willing to really, you know, speak today on the, on the topic. So I'll start with, with the NYPA team. 
I, if I can take this one, uh, Scott, if you don't mind. Uh, Are you? Uh, I think. <laughs> yep. I, I think that uh, the thing that really stands out with the jump team, and maybe we shouldn't be mentioning that uh, that early um, <laughs> in our relationship, but uh, they are picking up the stuff very, very quickly, right? We, even though uh, we are a complex entity, we do feel like we speak the same language. Um, uh, Sean is awesome in picking up the intricacies of uh, NIPAS operations. Uh, Wendy is doing a wonderful job managing the pro program. Um, we can always count on uh, Justin's support in case we run into any issues. So definitely the ability to step in and right from the first minute of our interaction, um, start proving that they understand what we do and also paint a picture of how they will make our lives better. And uh, you know what, I hope that we haven't overwhelmed Jump Analytics with the um, the volume of the information that we have been throwing uh, at them. I think that we may have surprised them a little bit, but so far um, I do believe that they have been standing up to the challenge in terms of um, understanding our business. Yeah, and just from my perspective, um, it, you know, it's the responsiveness has been there the entire time, um, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, I don't like sending emails and not hearing anything for five days. Uh, you know, things like that never happen. Um, and, and it's their willingness to work with us through some of our quirks as an organization. Uh, you know, it, it takes a long time for us to get contracts processed around here and Jump was good enough um, to start work without a contract being in place. Uh, just knowing that we were going to get there and, you know, something that was very much appreciated that they were willing to go out on a limb um, and, you know, start putting their time and sweat equity into this before they ever had any contract that they were definitely going to get paid for it. Um, and the, the other thing is they've been helping us look at how we can implement this in other parts of the organization and kind of what this can look like at an end state. Um, and it's been really interesting to me that we've now had three or four other groups that I don't think Jump even knows about yet that are looking at the platform and saying, hey, how can you roll this out to my group after you guys get done with your implementation? Um, so we have like three or four, at least different groups within the organization that are looking to fall in line and get up and running on this after, uh, after the financial planning department does. Um, and I think part of that has been uh, not only the promises of what the system's going to do, which I'm sure it will, um, but also the interactions that everybody at NIPA has had with the team so far. Excellent. Well, I'll say I appreciate the kind words, guys. Um, if I could layer anything on there, um, complex is good. I mean, that's what a lot of our consultants like. Um, they like seeing complexity and sophistication in requirements for sure. Uh, there's no shortage at, at NIPA. Um, and even in evaluation stages, I don't know how many clients on the line have, you know, are involved heavily in that, but even as a partner implementing uh, or going through an evaluation, um, we're also evaluating the potential for that client at the exact same time we're being evaluated. And that happens, that's common. Uh, we wanna see that uh, there's alignment at the executive level, at Scott's level, that he's going to be involved throughout the project. We look for that sort of thing. Uh, we like to see that there's going to be resources dedicated or involved with the project as we go through each of the phases, uh, right from your evaluation right to go live. Um, that's what makes projects even more successful is when you have client involvement to that level where they're dedicating a percentage of their time uh, to deliverables, to aspects of the uh, initiative. And all those lights were green when working with the, uh, the NIPA team. We really appreciated the evaluation that they went through. We thought it was a very mature uh, evaluation. They evaluated the solution very fairly, understand the capabilities. They brought up the requirements and capabilities of the solution uh, to the overall objectives of the organization to ensure that those are being met. Um, level set on expectations. I, I did definitely gather a comment that Scott said, you know, during the evaluation, you could tell there was a lot of folks involved and a lot of folks' opinions were being heard, uh, which we appreciated. It kind of felt like, um, uh, everything was very balanced in the way uh, the evaluation was going, and, and the, we, we certainly thought that was good. And then the other thing that we uh, we like to see was um, early stages around communication seemed to be very good. 
uh, with the client. Communication is a key to success, not only on the evaluation, obviously, but having proper uh, project governance and a communication plan that makes sense throughout the engagement. Uh, we were looking at signs of that, and we've seen uh, even you know, through the early stages of our engagement um, that that is a strength that we have as a partnership together with NIPA. Wendy, I know you're kind of in the middle here. Is there anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, you know, I feel like, um, you know, NIPA's, NIPA's giving us their point of view as to getting buy-in on their side and getting all of the groups um, enabled and, and, you know, that's helping on the change management side on their side. But from our side, um, what that enabled us to do is look at the holistic view of the actual process. And so, you know, the FPNA group, we're not talking to them in isolation and looking at their one piece of work because we could, you know, we could automate their spreadsheet sheets and we could do what, what's good for them. But the ability to have all these other people engaged has also allowed us to, you know, look at efficiencies in their processes and, and kind of spread it out. Um, you know, eventually, you know, we hope this turns into a program to Scott's um, point, you know, different organizations in the group, but the actual product that we're working on right now for FPNA is only going to be that much better um, because we have had that holistic view right from the very beginning. So, um, yeah, it, it was a lot, you know, there's a lot of people involved and I, I get why NIPA um, was doing that from a change management perspective, but from our side of it, it's really helping us, you know, get a solution that's not going to be piecemeal together. It's really, you know, we're going to get to the end and we can visualize the end um, right now. It's going to be in stages, you know, I mean, let's not say we're going to tackle it all in one, um, you know, bite, you know, one bite, but we're going to, you know, make them a little bit smaller, but we know where we're going. So we've got a roadmap and a plan. Um, which from my perspective is, is great because, you know, we can see the different pieces feeding into it and, and how they're all going to fit together. Yeah, that's a great point, Wendy. Yeah, when, yeah, Wendy, you bring up a good, you know, topic that I wanted to cover and that's change management, um, you know, going from Excel to, you know, a more robust solution. Um, what has been kind of the pulse on the team? You know, is there excitement? How are you kind of managing the, the change uh, change management perspective of this project? You know, um, again, NIFA has stepped up when it comes to change management. And I'll just give you a quick example of something that's been going on just recently within the last 10 days. Um, you know, we're starting to look at, at collecting files, mm -hmm. files from other groups within the organization. And, okay. you know, the IT department awesome. has been very vocal that we, um, make sure that we have those conversations with those specific groups that we understand who's going to be responsible for the file, you know, not just looking at it from a, what needs to be included in the file, what, you know, what fields do you need, but more so who's going to be responsible, have we talked to them, are they engaged, do they know what's going on? So, you know, that's just a recent example of it. Um, you, you know, when we get to the training aspect of it, you know, we'll be putting a, a training program together where, you know, I mean, people will, will be able to, you know, to sit on on the training and know what, what they're going to be expected to do. Um, I think also, I don't want to, I don't want to make light of the fact that because Magic has been, um, you know, seconded to this project, you know, as much as possible within um, blackout period, we are uh, um, um, actually enabling him on a day by day basis. You know, our team engages with him and says, here, we're going to do an input form. You know, this is how we do it, you know, and, and he's able to see it step by step by step. So he's involved right now. His team is involved right now, and they're not going to be seeing it for the first time in three months or four months down the line. Um, so I think that is going to be, you know, one of the biggest things that's going to help us get to that change in adoption is that we've got them every step of the way. Um, right from the very beginning, right from, you know, from the very minute detail. Great. Anything to add from the, the NIPA team? Anything, you know, are, are folks excited? Um, has there been any, you know, 
resistance thus far or any challenges around, you know, kind of adopting a new solution or are folks um, embracing it? I would say, oh, sorry, Scott, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Magic, it's fine. I, I would say that, you know what, um, you will always get some concerns, right? So there are uh, team members who sure. uh, actually enjoy moving the Excel files uh, between different mm -hmm. folders. Uh, luckily, uh, that is not happening too much. And I think that the overall enthusiasm uh, and the concept of uh, being able to actually forego that uh, fun exercise uh, is certainly out there. So uh, people are really looking forward to simplifying their lives. Uh, and you know what, dedicating more time to analysis rather than just pushing the data around. Right. And what Wendy had mentioned about uh, the involvement with the jump team, this is certainly helping out. We don't want to be in a position where somebody hands over um, a finished product uh, with a, I don't know, 300 page manual and we have to start learning it. We want to be involved from the beginning. We want to make sure that our team are the first folks who can show everybody else that, you know what, this thing is working. This thing can improve your lives and uh, it'll benefit everybody. And then we can start um, educating everybody else within NIPA that, uh, you know what, there's, there's true value in it, uh, uh, not only from the end user of reports perspective, but also uh, from new adopters. Oh, that's great. And so kind of my next uh, question, and, and certainly folks, you know, we've got about 15 minutes left. So if there are questions, please don't be shy. Um, you know, understand you're kind of new to the project, you're, you're getting, you know, started. Have there been any, you know, roadblocks or pain points um, up until this point? And if so, you know, how did you overcome them? Is there, a, you know, a, a path of escalation? You know, what has that experience been like thus far? I, I'd say the only roadblock has been internal roadblocks at night. It hasn't been uh, from the jump team or from the system at all. Um, and a lot of it has had to do with cybersecurity from our perspective. So, um, you know, as, as I mentioned, everybody was involved in this from the very beginning, including our IT architecture and, um, and cyber groups. But as the threat of cyber has been increasing exponentially in a very short period of time. Our requirements for what the organization is looking for to protect our IT infrastructure has grown um, such that there were some changes that needed to be made on the fly to the way we were looking to implement the solution. Um, you know, from my perspective, it wasn't exactly what I wanted, um, but from the perspective of making sure that our organization is safe from an IT, uh, IT and cyber perspective, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to go against what our, what our cyber guys are saying. Um, so I'd, I'd say that's really the only roadblock we've run into at this point. Um, you know, I am looking forward to starting to see the beginnings of a product and something I can take a look at and start working with. Um, and like I said, if you want to have another follow up of one of these in you know six to nine months, I'll let you know then. But but everything's going in the right direction at this point. You know that's awesome, and I would love to to you know have a part two of, of today's session for sure. Um, so you know we we have several folks um, on the line, and Srini, you just uh, raised your hand. You can go ahead if you have a question. Yes, uh, Scott. I'm still trying to get my head around, I do understand that you have a data governance, change management, org management processes, and I do understand because we did go through a similar exercise uh, where we have to extract data. The business always wants real-time data. Um, you cannot tap into the transactional systems. Um, the data has to be curated, and uh, then data has to be provided the access to the right people so that you have a single source of data. Um, I do understand, but can you just give me a high level understanding of the complexity, like how many data sources you're trying to get the data from and um, how many reports are, I, I do understand that you're trying to do some merchant uh, and market uh, calculation and trying to get some forecasts done uh, here. Uh, can you just give us an idea of what, are you leveraging any of the pre-built stuff from the SAC, SAC or it's all going to be custom built? Uh, give us a, an idea because I do hear that you are on the in the journey in the very early stages of the journey. 
but could you just give us an idea so that we'll set the complexity and then get a, appreciate the, the effort here? Uh, sure, Shreen. You know what? I'm actually going to let Magic handle that question. He's, he's, as I mentioned before, much more involved in the details than me. And um, whatever I say is probably going to be wrong. So go ahead, Magic. I'm sure it would be right, uh, you know, yeah. to, nevertheless, we're talking about, uh, I want to say roughly 60 input files that vary in size, we get data from the forecasting group, so the customer load forecasting, uh, forecasts um, uh, are coming through to us, we do receive uh, data from the risk group, which includes uh, the projection of the prices, uh, we get the hedges from those guys. Uh, uh, we also get a very large portion of our um, custom energy solution uh, projections, uh, Treasury provides us the data. Altogether, as I said, we're talking about 60 uh, Excel files that have to be merged into what we call an operating forecast model. Now from that, what we pull out on a regular basis, um, and this can, this can vary, it could be monthly, it could be um, actually uh, some of those reports could be annual, but uh, I want to say that uh, altogether probably 100 reports, um, that includes exhibits as well. And uh, the challenge is maybe not so much in handling the reports that are known that need to be published, right? As Scott was uh, mentioning, we are getting more and more ad hoc requests. Um, you know what, I, I think that we are experiencing a um, Amazon Prime effect uh, actually spilling over to the financial planning uh, mm -hmm. where everybody expects uh, to have the report uh, the next day. And um, you know what, uh, every day, um, well, I would say every week, we, could, we do get a request uh, for a new type of the report, which is becoming a little bit cumbersome. And we're confident that uh, SAC solution is going to actually make our life easier uh, in that regard. And I hope, I hope that actually answers your question, Srini. No, uh, yeah, that gives me an idea, the complexity, what you're dealing with. Um, um, so, I, I hope uh, you are getting the data from your BW, not from the transactional systems. Am I right? Are, are some other things like a load forecasting, are they coming from the external systems? The risk group providing input, those are as external Excel files coming in, or are we tapping directly into those systems? Uh, well, just, just trying to get an idea of that. Yeah, currently in, in the current OF setup, we don't have the ability to tap into those systems. We are handling Excel files. Those groups do have their own um, task specific systems that have been put in place. Uh, Power Optics, I don't know if you've heard uh, about the product from Partigen is one of them. Allegro Ascent uh, is a source uh, of data from the risk group uh, as well from our as well as from our energy resource um, management uh, team uh, so in the current state we are receiving excel files in the uh, immediate stage one we will be receiving flat files that will be loaded uh, up into sac and uh, hopefully uh, when we get confidence that uh, we can do all of that in a safe manner from the cybersecurity point of view we can actually progress to the next stage where we will have a true integration between those um, individual software platforms um, and SAC, as well as the full incorporation of actually data residing in uh, SAP for the actuals. Thanks, thanks. Uh, that, that kind of completes the picture what I was trying to think through. Thank you, I appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, it's a good yeah. question. And our pond from, an, from an SAC perspective, the connections are strong, especially if you have an SAP landscape, you can connect to just about any source, whether it be transactional, BW, uh, business warehouse, or other systems. Um, but uh, I think it was Srini asking the question, I believe, but you know, just, just to be clear, I mean, a lot of that comes down to arch architecture and uh, a, you know, a best practice approach for some of that integration. And even what Machik was describing is even a stage process where maybe in, in some cases we're doing a flat file first and then building a more robust uh, connection down the road. So even though the system is capable of connecting directly to any of those source systems, you have to kind of back yourself up and think about the holistic vision and understanding of what the best architecture ultimate will be in the short term and in the long term. Awesome. Um, Arpan, you had a question. I'll, I'll turn it to you. 
Yeah, first of all, um, I appreciate you arranging these discussions, okay? And I was so excited to be a panelist for after a long time, okay? Uh, so Justin, I think the question is more towards you, okay? Um, SAP has evolved its planning process, correct? Or planning tools. It started with BPS, IP, if you know, and then SEM, BPS, some of them like BPC, they acquired Outlooksoft. And what happened like um, SAP is trying to rebrand itself to a cloud company, correct? So the, all the rise and everything came up, right? And uh, SAC is a new tool. It's a SAP analytics on the cloud. It's a new concept, new technology, new hub, new integrations model. So if you look at the SAC, one of the big uh, advantages is the amount of available out of the box connector, including Azure, including uh, Redshift and so forth and so on. So what SSC is truly trying to do is to tell, I am open, use me, okay? I'm going to bring you self-service, okay? That works well for some customers who are basically coming from an Excel-based, um, um, a little disjointed um, mechanism to a governed planning mechanism, correct? To some extent. So for if a customers are a little advanced where they don't do only a um, separate Excel file planning, but they have a, uh, real planning process and they work with a pretty huge volume of data. Utility will be having a lot of CapEx and the projects and et cetera, right? And there are several planning tools in the industry has failed because they couldn't handle the volume and the scale, right? Uh, for, for a different mechanism and SAP struggled. And also second thing is when Scott is going to look for the finance and this under the CFO organizations, you also need to do the, uh, the financials data consolidations planning too, more like a management planning and the legal planning, correct? On the on on the on the on the side, help us a little bit. If those advanced customer who are not going from Excel to other new one, but they already have something, and SAP SSC is coming up with a new propositions. Well, I am new age. I can do better for than Hyperion, or I can do better than Anaplan, or I can do better for Adaptive. How do you think this product is experiencing you for? Maybe it's a loaded question. Well, whatever uh, you can do. Okay, what do you tell to your brother and who are not coming from the Excel? Yeah, I mean, listen, we, we deal with clients that are coming from Excel and I know I referenced Excel earlier, but we also are dealing with clients that come from BPC, which is a very, very mature solution or Hyperion, which are extremely uh, robust, uh, mature solutions on the market. Um, and SAC can hold its own against those solutions. Um, performance is always a factor and you have to weigh out uh, requirements with performance regardless of the solution that you're going with. But um, frankly, SAC has been around for probably close to seven years now, quite some time. Um, I'm not really referring to it as a new product anymore. I'm actually referring to it as a more mature product, a much more mature product. And I see functional parity in many regards to BPC. A lot of the capabilities that existed in BPC you are now getting in the SAP Analyst Cloud solution. And I, you, we owe a little bit of that obviously to SAP. They've diverted a tremendous amount of horsepower to product development with SAP Analyst Cloud. There's, you know, I've heard different numbers, but there could be a thousand people today working on that solution, improving the performance, improving the capabilities, building temp, uh, out of the box templates, building out of the box um, connections and capabilities. So I really do feel it's a very strong solution. Um, is it perfect? Well. Perhaps not. I mean, you, you could you referenced a whole bunch of solutions that are, are far from perfect as well. Um, there are certain nuances that need to be addressed in every solution. But typically what we'll do is we'll go through a detailed requirements session, understand the goals and objectives of an organization, what those specific requirements are, and we will map them to the solution itself and identify what it's going to take to actually address that in SAP Analyst Cloud. Um, so from my perspective, especially in the last 18, 24 months, this solution in terms of its maturity and capability is certainly there. Um, and we have no issue going into organizations, especially with SAP clients that have BPC and replacing a lot of those planning processes with SAC, or even just maybe as a, a, an interim step, augmenting those BPC processes with additional capabilities from SAC. That's a very common use case as well. So, so whatever you explain, it means there is a valid use case for us to learn why you selected, why Scott and Mises selected SSC, but whether it is going to be successful in your environment, it is time will tell. Is that a fair way of putting? 
Uh, no, I think Scott's done, uh, Scott and the entire NIPA team have done a really good job evaluating SAC in the context of their requirements uh, and what the user experience will be, not just the specific requirements like a logic package and allocation that has to be done, uh, but also just the look and feel and usability of the front end interface. So I, I, and there is nothing in those evaluations that led us to believe that their requirements weren't a good fit and well suited with SAC. I wouldn't probably enter into any engagement with just more of a um, let's let's wait and see. It's it's more we're, we're also uh, need to have confidence that the requirements are a fit. And if we see a gap, we're going to address that gap early. We're going to raise it to the client early because I don't want to have those discussions in the 11th hour. I don't want to have those discussions when we should be hitting the finish line of the project. Um, so I, I don't think it's a wait. Uh, we'll wait and see. It's more that we've actually done our due diligence early and map those requirements to the solution capabilities and all of us collectively have re, uh, achieved a high level of confidence. Got it. So one question yeah. to Scott. So Scott, may I? Sorry. Laura. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, we've got time for just one last question. We okay. um, I will have stop two then. minutes I'll left, stop so we'll have to make it quick. <laughs> no, that's fine. It's fine. I'll let others go. No problem. That's fine. Perfect. And, and, Arman, um, if, so you, just, if you want to have further discussion around this, because I get the impression there is some a very specific um, aspect that you're looking at, I'm happy to have a call with you after and, and discuss it in more detail. I will contact you. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. If it's okay, I will okay. just want to add a. Oh, I think uh, Leonard has a question. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Hi, Scott. Um, it's Leonard Quan from BC Hydro in Vancouver, Canada. So a lot of the issues that you have or had is very similar to what's happening at BC Hydro. So we have a much akin. My question to you is what would success look like for Napa after the installation of SAC? Um, yeah, so I, I would look at success. First of all, I need a new system that replicates what my existing system does in terms of results coming out of models. I mean, that's, that's first and foremost, if we get to the end of the day, and we put data inputs into one system, you know, our existing Excel system, and put it into SAC, and we come out with different results. I'm going to have a problem because I, I know I'm pretty pretty confident in the results I'm getting in my existing system. So I think the very baseline is that I can replicate what I have today. Um, in terms of what I would really view as success from there, it's going to be the ability to. Uh, dynamically pull data from the system that I need. It's going to be the ability to answer questions for executive management and the board that they're going to have drilling down into data and being able to do it in basically real time. It's going to be the ability to run scenarios um, on our forecast that we have a very difficult time of doing today. And it's going to be the ability to integrate data from different groups within the organization in a seamless way that we are not seeing today. Um, and and I, I think kind of the next step to that is going to be seeing other groups within the organization also moving up onto the same SAC platform going forward so that it's not we're pulling data from even if it's a seamless pull of data from one system to the other, if everybody's already on the same system and using it for their own purposes, and you have basically one set of data, I would consider that a huge win for us. Great. I hope that answered your question. Yes, very much. The last question is, how are you going to wean the accountants off of Excel, which is pretty much like the old pocket calculators of of accountants in the past. So that's the trouble we're having here at BC Hydro is weaning them off of Excel. Uh, yeah, you know, I think it's going to be difficult. I mean, you know, let's face it, everybody uses Excel. You can, you know, in two seconds do something that it may take you two hours to program into a system. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think the proof is going to be when you can spend those couple hours doing something that you know is something you're going to need to replicate going forward over time. You can kind of build it out once. Um, I, I think that's going to be a big draw for people. And just seeing the user interface and being able to have, you know, power users within my group who are doing the actual work, the analytics, 
but also having the CFO being able to log in and pull information himself and the CEO being able to get this on his phone and pull up a report mm -hmm. and not have to call me or somebody from my team to need different pieces of information. I think that's gonna be a big factor in driving people away from Excel and more onto the system. Thanks, Scott. Sure. Matching. Um, well, I think we will. On. Okay. You can cover it all. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think that's a great way to wrap up today's um, discussion. We are at time. So just want to thank um, NIPA for being here today, as well as the Jump Analytics team. I will turn it over uh, to Megan to announce um, the winner of the assessment before we, we close out today. Yeah, thanks, Lauren. Um, so uh, for anyone on the call, even if you aren't the winner, I'd be happy to facilitate um, a conversation with the JUMP team. Um, so perfect. Uh, all right. So again, thank you, JUMP, for you know offering a free SAC requirements workshop. Um, so I did actually draw a winner during uh, the conversation, and the offering is going to go to Huntsville Utilities. So congratulations, Huntsville Utilities. Awesome. Thank and I can you. go ahead and follow up with next steps as well. <laughs> Great. And before we close so, out, yes, uh, go ahead. I was going to say before we close out, I just want to throw out there, listen, I'm on LinkedIn. If any of you have any more specific questions mm -hmm. and want to have a conversation, feel free to reach out, connect with me. Um, you know, I'll be happy, Magic and I, I'll be happy to get on a call with anybody who has any more specific questions that, um, that they didn't get a chance to ask today. Awesome. Thanks so much, Scott. That's a great, a great offer. And we're certainly happy yeah. to facilitate it if you can't find them on LinkedIn. And um, I'm looking forward to, to part two of today's discussion. I'll, I'll hold you to that so we can kind of- I was just going to say, I'm going to hold you to the that. Benefit. You got it. <laughs> Done. Looking forward to it. Yeah, good discussion. Awesome. Well, thank so you, thank everyone. You, everyone. Yeah. Have a good rest thank of your week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you so Bye. much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.